I love this eight seed. I feel like it's my uh, alma mater, um, but they are going up against, um, I think, the most dominant one seed in the bracket. I think that prepayment is certainly interesting and definitely a trend. That is definitely a trend that's going to be growing, but it follows the money, and the money's in, in Medicare Advantage. I think we're going to see evolutions or iterations, if you will, um, on the MA side, so I think it's a blowout between um, the first seed and the, and the eighth seed. Let's see if uh, let's see if this is the strongest one seed in the bracket with a quick flip of the paddle. Red, Medicare Advantage. I'm not, I can't even finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All it, right. Yeah. Well. Uh. So I think this is one of the best matchups in the round of 32. Um, so I think both of them are going to be mechanisms that the self-insured uh, market and and the actually insured markets are going to start to use to drive down costs. Um, and it's hard to say which one's really going to win this one. I actually don't think this one's that close. Um, you know, I think the PBM, the Mark Cuban effect on PBMs wins pretty, pretty easily. And I think because of the benefit to the consumer and because the spotlight right now. I think I'm going to say, so uh, I, I agree with Eric. I don't think this is particularly close. However, missing from the conversation when you focus on PBMs is the responsibility of drug manufacturers to set pricing. And so the PBMs would say, who plays that role? In our, you know, if you're going to regulate us as a, as a non-value adding mm -hmm. part of the healthcare ecosystem, then what is the check on, on, on unrealistically and unsustainably high uh, drug pricing? Red, uh, direct contracting, black, Mark Cuban. Black, Mark, Mark. Realistically, in 2024, you know, there's no obliteration, there's no demise, you know, there may be a slow burn um, that uh, continues. I, I would agree that it's actually less about the demise of the RVU happening than it is about strong growth in primary care memberships. Yeah. So maybe the next round is really where, where we see that all settling out. Okay. It's a consumer friendly notion and, and it fits in a space where I think the benefit design and the complexity of, of, of third-party health insurance you know really creates challenges. Red is the primary care membership and black is the demise of the RVU. We've been working on health equity and trying to really understand where are health systems on this? What are they doing? What are the what, what's working? Uh, and they're not there's nothing happening. There's nothing. And um, we just had a meeting with the ARP. Same thing. We all, we all sat down and said, what's going on? What are, or what? We brought in experts from all over the country. And the answer is really not much. There's really a lot of talk and not a lot of action. People aren't sure how, what to do, how to collect the data. There's a lot of reasons for, for that, that. I'm not saying there's any nefarious reason, but it, it's just that there's nothing really happening. Uh, for economic impact of SDOH and health equity, I think you hear rumblings of that. I think some employers are saying, can you actually demonstrate um, you health system, you provider, that you are delivering care in an equitable manner, or I am allowing the access of care via my benefit plan to be delivered equitably. Let's go red, two seed acceleration of risk bearing specialties, black, the seven seed economic impact of SDOH and health equity. Red, black, black, black. <laughs> 